Welcome to Close Listening. I'm Zach Morgenstern, joined as always by silent co-host Ludwig von B. And today we're going to be discussing a little Rick Astley. Now, depending on what level of detail you're looking at this picture, you're going to be saying, oh, I know this guy. That's the guy from the Rickroll. Or you could say, I don't recognize this guy at all. He looks so quite different from the guy from the Rickroll. And that would be correct because this record was recorded 31 years after the Rickroll. This is Rick Astley's most recent record. It's from 2018 and it's called Beautiful Life. Perhaps if you're new to the internet, you don't know what being Rickrolled means. But I think around 2007, it became this phenomenon that the idea would be you would link someone to something intriguing or exciting. You'd use what's now called a clickbaity headline. They click on it and it's a fake link, link that leads them to a music video of Rick Astley's 1987 song, Never Gonna Give You Up. There's something really mesmerizing about the song because it doesn't quite feel of any era. Rick Astley has his red hair in a pompadour, so he looks kind of like Elvis. And with his rich baritone voice, he sounds kind of like Elvis. Yet his music production with drum machines and synths is very much of the 80s. So it's a sort of two eras mix kind of thing. And as a result, you can't tell, is this cool or tacky? You know, is this classic rock or modern pop or what? I don't know, it's just this meme. It's the Rickroll. But Rick Astley was not, in fact, a one-hit wonder. He had a number of hit songs in the 1980s, many of which, including Never Gonna Give You Up and My Favorite Together Forever, were written by the songwriting team of Stock, Aitken, and Waterman. Now, Rick Astley had his career in the 1980s, and he put out the occasional album until 2005. And this is right before the meme takes off. His, his, the peak of his fame is long gone, and he kind of disappears from music for a while. Then in around 2013, he hints that he's putting out new music. There's a performance of him singing a song about superheroes. That apparently was going into an unreleased album called My Red Book. But then finally, in 2016, we get a new record from Rick Astley celebrating his 50th birthday, taking the convention from Adele. He calls his record 50. And for the first time, we have a record by Rick Astley where he is the only the songwriter on the record. He did a little bit of songwriting in the past, but with his last two records, with 50 and with Beautiful Life, Rick Astley is in the songwriter's chair. He's not just some pretty guy with a pretty voice. He can play his instruments. He can write the songs. And boy, he can still sing. So what do I make of this new Rick Astley record? Has he gone from pop tart to music auteur? Well, it's an interesting step in the right direction. But I would like to see what he does uh, if he comes up with another album now that with these two releases, 50 and Beautiful Life, he feels back on top of his game and very much in the position of songwriter, of home studio music maker. The opening track to Beautiful Life is the title track, Beautiful Life. It starts with this really weird pop yodeling, yodeling and then kind of becomes reminiscent of the song, ah, the song Get Lucky. I'm up all night for good fun. I'm up all night to get lucky. Uh, the next song, Chance to Dance, is a soulful acoustic tune backed by a kind of who let the dogs out style, woot woot, and it's just a song begging to dance. Track number three is She Make Me. It's the most passionate love song so far on the album, yet there's an interesting contradiction in the lyrics. It sounds like it's an about an established love, an established relationship, but then says, maybe I can trust you and let me in. And this seems to be a recurring theme throughout this record. You know, Rick Astley is a married man. He's a man in his 50s. So on the one hand, he's writing these mature songs about being happy in a relationship. Yet all these songs suggest there's something wrong. There's something dramatic that needs to be worked on that he hasn't fully let his love in. Now, who knows if this is about his real wife or this is metaphorical or what the heck is going on. But just this is a constant theme throughout the record. Track four is Shivers. We get another love song. Uh, the drum machine is more pronounced here. So again, the interesting thing with Rick Astley is that he has this Elvis voice. He's now leaning into being a singer songwriter, but he's also very much into contemporary pop conventions. So I actually saw him play live in 2018 and he did covers of Uptown Funk by Bruno Mars and Shape of You by Ed Sheeran. So, you know, even as much as he can, uh, he's a mu musician who started in the 80s, which now counts as a long time ago, that doesn't mean he stopped identifying as a pop star. And that's kind of interesting. He identifies both as of the past and very much of the present. Track number five is Last Night on Earth. 
Uh, again, another sort of ambiguous love song, though, because of its grand themes, I suppose. In this one, the love could be broader, more metaphorical. It could be the a song from a dramatic scene in a Disney movie. Uh, and it still has a pop rhythm, but it relies on acoustic instrumentation. And its sheer epicness makes it one of my favorite songs on the record. Track six is called Every Corner. So like a lot of songs on this record, it's in a minor key, but it's hard to tell exactly how sad that that means it's supposed to be or whether Rick Astley just likes something about recording in minor moves. Uh, for better or for worse, I feel like this song captures the feel of a lot of the album. On the one hand, it has that rich, timeless Rick Astley voice. On, on another hand, a lot of the musical choices feel very contemporary pop. It, it actually, because of Rick Astley's rich voice, unlike you know Ed Sheeran's more mumblecore sound, it kind of sounds like a richer version of Shape of You. Uh, and the and the intonation, the way he enunciates the words on uh, "Yes, I love you, I love you blind" uh, in the chorus is pretty cool. Track number seven is "I Need the Light." I guess a broad kind of protest or spiritual song in the same vein as this little life of light, light of mine. It seeks hope from the ideals of youth uh, in within the cold and darkness of a metaphorical winter. Track eight is called Better Together. This one is a distinct little vocal harmony in the chorus. And it also uses uh, a nice little simple piano riff, by which I mean is it's not too fast. And you hear just individual notes being played, which sort of takes your head out of that pop, you know, oomphy headspace. Track number nine is Empty Heart. Uh, this one tries to sound a little different than the others because it's, it sounds like the drums are played with brushes rather than sticks. So I'm not a drummer. So I, I'm not great about talking about that sound. But I guess more broadly, the point is a lot of these songs have a lot that's similar about them. There are these sort of, I'm deeply in love, I'm a mature man in love, but I also have my doubts in their lyrical themes. They're all in minor keys and a lot of them use uh, contemporary pop rhythms. Track number 10 is Rise Up. Uh, and again, it feels like similar ambiguous, you know, how deep in love are you kind of themes. Uh, the message here seems to be that Rick feels like he rises up when he overcomes these marital tensions, you know, when he's just fully happy and feels like everything is right in love. Uh, it's a spiritual thing. He rises up. Uh, track 11 is called Try. Uh, this one uses dramatic pauses very well. I suppose that's what's kind of different about it. And Rick sings it like a lot of the songs on the record, but this one in particular with intense emotion. Uh, and there's a great video of him performing this one live with a string section. And you can see how much the song means to him. Track number 12 is called Believer. The most unique part about this is when he just starts speaking in the chorus. It's really effective, but you have to hear it. And you know, it's, it's hard to explain music. The way I would explain this one is it's kind of an alternative English national anthem. Those who know it would know the national anthem of England is kind of lame. God save our gracious queen, God save the queen. When we think of Britain, not as a crusty old monarchic institution, but as a fun, exciting place that means something good to people all, all around the world. We don't think of the monarchy. We certainly don't think of the empire. We think of the many great bands that came from there. And while this song, and I feel like this song being sung by an Englishman who's both a lot younger than the people who are in those bands, but still old enough to feel nostalgic for a past musical glory days, almost makes it can pass as this anthem of England for the people. And although it has a sort of similar melody to the rest of the songs, and I might want to shake that up a bit, bit more, I really like that as a concept, that a theoretical anthem of England would be about celebrating the Beatles and the Stones and Queen and Super Tramp. You know, it wouldn't be about God save our Queen. Overall, Rick Astley was and continues to be this fantastic combination of things. You know, he's a little bit old, a little bit very much in the pop vogue, and it creates a unique sound. And it's great that he's writing songs now. The only problem with this record is that the songs all sound very similar. And I feel a bit bad about saying that because in his, his little writer's note at the beginning of this record, uh, he writes, I have a beautiful life, thanks to you. When I recorded 50, it was a pet project to mark a milestone birthday. It turned into a life-changing experience and I can't ever thank everyone involved enough. It gave me a new lease of life that has given me the confidence to make beautiful life. The songs on this album once again come from the heart, but this time I wrote them believing that someone might actually hear them and maybe even love them as much as I do. I guess the thing is when we have strong feelings, we end up expressing them to ourselves again and again. And he makes these songs and they're all well-produced songs and they all express these meaningful feelings to him. It's just the one downside is that they're all 
kind of similar sounding because I guess they were all composed in a similar headspace. I've, I've also heard Rick say that he sort of just recorded all these songs individually not too long after recording the 50 album and then was like, oh shit, I have another album on my hands. Uh, so I guess I feel a little bad for not liking this combination of songs as much as he did, but any individual song on here, Try, Believer, I Need the Light, Last Night on Earth, She Makes Me, Beautiful Life, all great musical moments. And I'd be curious to see what Rick does next. I'd like to see him maybe move a bit away from that pop drum rhythm, because even if, even if it's using real drums, it creates this snap to a grid effect, which makes the vocals feel a bit more from the line than, than they need to be. And, you know, I'm guilty of the same thing, but I'm not a major recording star like Rick Astley. So anyway, it's been a few years. I hope Rick Astley has new music in the works and you should absolutely check this record out. I am Zach Morgenstern. This is Ludwig von B. See you next time. Mm -hmm.